Hello everyone, uh, it's Piotr speaking. I'd like to welcome you to the next live stream. Uh, so today, 21st of August, uh, let's let's get started. First of all, let me let me know if you hear me and you hear me loud and clear. Give me one in the question box, please. All right, nice. It, it's 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 awesome to get some feedback. You know, guys, so we just sitting here and talking to the screen basically. So very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Let's uh, let me see. Is my uh, screen now okay? Oh my! <laughs> let me. Ah, oh, okay. PowerPoint crashed. So nice. This is this is always, I guess, an issue for the Microsoft things on Mac. Okay, let me let me know if you see my screen. It should be okay. Yeah, should be fine, right? Okay, so let let's start traditionally with the dev updates and you know what what's going on. So uh, last week during the webinar, we you know we discussed quite a lot of things. You discover guys quite a lot of issues, and I received quite a lot of uh, logs and you know informations and questions and and so on and so forth so i'm i'm super glad that you guys helping us you know to achieve and and you know to get into the mainnet release so your help is really appreciated uh thank you very much from from the whole team from myself so keep, keep on going like that we, we're gonna basically get into into that stage soon so yeah, we last Friday we uh, released updates with some of the issues that we observed. So we get new version of the app chronologic network, as well as you know, along with the Electron apps, which are basically the same, but you can run them on a desktop. Uh, so you know, separately, a little bit more secure. Uh, Time not core, new version, quite a lot of bug fixes, etc. New CLI version with all these, uh, all these, you know, changes and um, and goodies. So, yeah. Um, let me jump. Let me jump to the next screen. So this shows basically, you know, uh, this is the last week pull request from all these tools that we have. Actually, I, I forgot to put the Ethereum alarm clock a pro the protocol. There were some pull requests as well as I was like, you know, notified by by Logan today before the webinar. But in general, we push like 46 PRs. Uh, some of them just dependencies updates, but mo you know, majority of them are actually the bug fixes and features. So uh, we, you know, team is working very hard. 150% uh, basically of our time is just now focused on only on the development, only on making the time nodes and the other codes stable and, you know, just, just to get into the main and release. So thank you very much to the whole team as well. Um, additionally, some of you might, might notice that we actually get a few of our issues or the improvements funded by the Gitcoin. So Gitcoin, as you may know, or I don't know, who, 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 do you guys know what the Gitcoin project about? Just give me one if you if you understand, if you know, and zero if not. You know, let's see if we need to explain a little bit more. Okay, so we have some zeros and some ones. All right. So Gitcoin, Gitcoin is a open source project. This is under the consensus umbrella. I know these guys, I know the founders. Uh, so they working on a incentivization layer for the open source. So it works like that, that, you know, you, if you have the GitHub issues that are, you know, belongs to some open source project, you can put a bounty on Gitcoin page, you know, and, and propose either like you see here, like 100 DAI, which is like 100 USDs, or any other token. So in the future, we're working on to put the day token as a reward for for some of the you know as a bounties for for helping us with the development. Currently, we get three um, issues funded by by Gitcoin basically. So 
by by doing that, any any project can put the bounties for the pull request uh, and and the bug fixes or features and what what have you. So this is about basically putting the community uh, program programmers uh, people who can earn extra money on contributing to the open source. So that's all about the Gitcoin currently. Um, so one of them already done and merged two are actually in works uh, pending so we we pretty pumped and happy that you know people getting into our code base and, and you know reading the, that code and you know trying to help us uh, achieve the success yeah so these slides actually come from the previous webinars uh, done by joseph and since we have i think the majority of the questions and and issues and uh, all these like things were regarding the economic strategy options. So I just want to uh, rehearse that and explain that to you guys again. So and, and then I will show you uh, on the time note how to set and how they actually effectively, you know, change the dynamics on, of the time note. So we have three. Currently, we have three separate uh three different options uh for the for the economic strategy actually there are four but we are not gonna talk about the fourth one we're gonna cover that in the next webinar but let, let's start with the first one so so the first setting is the maximum deposit so, and by the way the the economic strategy options are only available and have an effect when you have the claiming enabled. So as you see on the screen, I think I need to move my controls. So so yeah, it, you can't see because it's actually strip, stripped, but you need to make the, I think I'm gonna show you basically live. So in order to make those uh, parameters uh, working, you need to enable the claiming mode. So this is, that's the slider right so when you enable them then you see that you have a bunch not bunch but three options that you can set and they will change and affect the way the the time not works so let's go back to the to the um presentation so max maximum deposit as this as the name name suggests uh it's um it's a parameter that will check whether the transaction that is is you know offered to the network by the person who schedules have you know the, how much is the deposit and because you know the deposit is something that you might be asked when uh, you know during the claiming process and it's just a safe feature that this allow you to put like a you know huge deposit because some people might I don't know require quite a lot of you know like 10 ether deposit for for the transactions obviously that's that's uh that's really ridiculous and probably won't happen but just in case if your time note has like a lot of money you know a lot of either because it gathers you know time bounties and all that stuff so it allows you to help it you know it helps you to control and just keep those um it's just keep those um transactions that has you know much higher deposit because you are not willing to risk this um this money um yeah by the way so as usually uh if you have any questions just put them in the question uh box so either i will answer them live or team will answer them in the, in the question box so let, let's continue now so minimum profitability so this is something that really um kind of gets quite a lot of questions and, and you know i think the most misunder misunderstood feature so uh it's just about to set some profitability threshold so when you claim your transaction you have the bounty which is set by the person who schedules as well the payment modifier so the payment modifier is a is a from zero to one number from zero to one that is increasing from the start of the claiming window until the end of the claiming window so the claiming window by default is uh, around the one hour so if i schedule something like in so let's say in four hours then the claiming window will start just one hour before that time which is like in three hours and then if i if you have like zero profitability set then you might wanna might wanna get this transaction claimed early but your payment modifier will be 
low which means that in general if if you get like very small payment modifier and the transaction cost is higher then you even though you execute and re get the reward and everything you actually might not be profitable so there is no guarantee in that case so we currently working on, on improving this feature so it's safe and for instance we can um say that you sh you, sh you know you shouldn't you, you shouldn't like uh execute transaction that makes you not profitable but on the other hand i know that some people might get like into more into altruistic way so it's not going to be always like it has to be profitable for the network to exist some for some some transactions might not be all they might sl slightly not profitable but still get through uh, but that's that's what is this all about and the minimum balance so it looks at your current current balance of your account and if it is you know below some threshold it just don't uh, really claim new transactions it's because you know you need to have so minimal ether for the execution so what what we actually added last week is a new feature that when when you check the minimum balance it also lo also looks into upcoming executions so we don't want to basically get into the um situation where your time node claimed as too much transaction and have zero ether zero either for the gas and can can't actually execute those transactions which means that it's going to lose those you know transactions and deposits so now it's much more safe and you just keep the minimum balance like um you know at some level like you know point to point point to whatever S some number which is like you know uh, above the zero by default okay so uh, guys do we have any questions regarding that part uh if not then i'm gonna go and and run the time nodes let me know if, if we need to go back and uh, explain again or it's just perfectly clear okay looks like looks like it get through so let's let's now jump into the time nodes so um today actually I'm gonna be running my time node from the command line tools. So, uh, that, is there anyone on the webinar that is running the uh, command line tools where, you know, time node as well? Just give me one if you're running the CLI version of the time node. Okay, yeah. So we have some some people running the CLI one, cool. So, and, and who's running the DAP or the Electron app? Maybe first the DAP, so who's running the on the DAP, which is a app.chronology.network. Yep, okay, we have some people as well. And the Electron app, so the downloadable execs or the you know Mac uh, applications or Linux applications. So, all right, I, I see. Yep, I see some people as well. So cool, we have like the full coverage. So some people running you know CLI, some some. Um, some electrons some the on a on a dap cool all right let, let's get started so for those who don't know you know how to actually install it's it's fairly easy so there are a few things that you need to first have installed on your system so our software is running on the node.js so obviously the node.js is an um, dependency so we actually require version you know eight and higher so make sure that your node version is you know at least at least eight so i think i don't need to show how to install node on the pc you know it, it's it's system basically dependent on uh, on mac you can use uh, and on windows probably as well there, there is a nice tool called uh, nvm which just you know helps you to know is node version manager it helps you to maintain the versions updates and installations and, and what have you so this is a very convenient way to to install node but just you know uh, that's by the way okay so so in order to install we have the node right so the node comes with the npm tool um which is a 
which is a uh, packet ma package manager. And the CLI tool is actually living in this NPM repository. So in order to install it, you just run the NPM space I space dash G and then the name. So it's just at Ethereum alarm clock slash CLI. So I'm not, I'm not gonna install it, doesn't really matter. But if you just execute that, it will go through and install your, um, your time note. So the good part of having this on the node and in the browser is that is it works pretty much everywhere. Uh, some of you may notice I posted on our Telegram channel the uh, screenshot, and in fact I'm running my time note on a on a ARM device, so something like a Raspberry Pi is not like Raspberry Pi Pi, but it's Banana Pi, whatever. It's just one of the vari variation. It's just it's like slow and you know low energy device but the time note actually works pretty well so it's continuously running for like a couple of days now since the weekend and yeah that's gonna be probably my way of running the time note all right guys so um let's go let's go into the let's go into the time note so you see the bunch of options right here so ec space uh, space time note space double dash claiming, auto start, log file, etc. So there is quite a lot of different settings, right? So um, if you wonder basically how how and you know you need some help, we obviously have a help bundle. So for running the time note you type EAC time note double dash help and you will get the explanation for all these parameters here, right? Okay. So here, in a short word, so we're gonna run the time node, claiming enabled, auto start means that it starts automatically and starts scanning. Log file, it's set to console. This is for the presentation purpose. By default, it it's keeps uh, writing to the log files, which is obviously much more convenient. And then you can later on, you know, scan the log files if something happened, etc. You know, my, my gets like, um... yep. Um... Uh, wallet, so you specify your wallet file, the password, uh, max deposit. And yes, here we're getting into the uh, economic strategy thing. So max deposit is like 0.1 ether. Minimal profitability is 0 0.0001, which is very small. And minimum balance is one. So let me change that because uh, let me change that to something like 0 0.1 first, like an analytics on, we, we go through. So it started, there are some transactions working. So we actually currently, for, for a couple of days, we are running the a, a tool on our you know, Heroku instance that actually scheduling transactions on the random time, random bounties and all that stuff every five minutes. Which means that if you run the time node, there will be plenty or at least some transactions available for you to test all the time. So it, it runs it runs 24 seven um just for the testing purpose so you we don't really even know when but you know from time to time these transactions appears that's obviously makes uh the testing a little bit more realistic and you know that's what what is this all about um okay i will now show you um we have we have a couple of the options set so let me again as the last time uh so i'm running my coven network this is just for scheduling transactions to the network. So my node looking at different, my time node is looking at the different node, Ethereum node. So everyone has like any anyone who's running the time node now has a called chance more or less. Let me again, let me use my my magic tool, testing tool. Let's schedule five transactions. Let's see what happens. So um, yeah, we have now transaction happen. So. Some people may notice that uh, we introduced a new log files, and we hope that they are much more, you know, um, much more readable and verbose. So, so you understand by just looking at the info, um, info on transactions. So, yeah. So, what happened now? We scheduled five transactions, right? You already seen that. We have five different uh, scheduled transactions. We now actually the time node is looking into the transaction pool and this is safe meaning that if we notice that there is another transaction happening then we actually skipping this transaction right so here it says that for four of these transactions we notice that some other time nodes actually trying to claim 
and for one it apparently you know at the time when i was checking that no one really was claiming unfortunately as you see here it wasn't true i mean uh, probably at the same time when I was checking, someone else checked and it was like, you know, a few milliseconds probably faster and sent the claiming transaction, which means that my time node didn't know about it and sent the other transaction and we have the collision, right? So this kind of information with error, transaction already claimed, is actually something that we get the cost. So we can, see, we can pick at this on the get stats and we see now, um, Yep, okay, I, I, so apparently the is the cost was smaller than the six zeros, uh, but we have the fake transactions and, and discovered transactions. So let's let's now, so you see that some other transactions just appearing and we are skipping because other claiming found. Let me, let me do another test. Uh, let me do the another test this apparently you know i wasn't lucky enough to get these transactions maybe this time let's again schedule another five transactions so you know it's it just i can't this is live <laughs> so i can't really i can't really like have a guarantee that my time node or the other will actually succeed so yeah but at least we have apparently no other time nodes okay Again, I get the collision this time. You see here, there is another skipping error. This means that actually the account that I'm trying to use is busy with the other transaction. So yeah, it's it's because we actually process multiple transactions at, at once. And here in this setup, I'm actually using only one account attached to the CLI, which I can't really like, you know, send multiple transactions multiple transactions at, at once. I need to wait for when I send the transaction, I need to wait for the confirmation and then I can send another one. So the time note is now really like looking into that and just disallow all these kind of errors. Still, I get I get the two collisions uh, not good today, don't have like a <laughs> luck, I guess. So yeah, unfortunately my balance is minus 45. Um, Yep, we have three failed claims. Uh, we have, okay, I see that we apparently, but I don't know why I don't see that in the logs, but I have one ongoing claim, claimed pending execution. So I don't know. Um, looks like we, we have no luck still. Let me show something else. I'm just killing my time note, right? And I will show you now when we set like minimum balance to some whatever number that I don't have, let's say 10 ether. Uh, and my current balance is 0.499. And the, the economic strategy said that don't claim the transaction unless you have more than like 10 ethers on your balance, which I don't have on, on this account. So now, when I do schedule the transaction, I should get the information that we are actually skipping this because the balance or the deposit, my balance is too low. Let, let's check, let's see if this is gonna work currently. Yep, so you see that because of this setting, we now see the not enough balance to claim. Um, so yeah, this is, this is something that, you know, uh, is a part of the of the of the uh, transaction. So, okay, now I see that we actually get some claimed uh, transaction. Now we executing that. Let, let's let's leave the time. Not, let's not kill it at this time. Um, okay, so yeah, we have the executed. So let's see. By the way, okay, we're executing another run. So maybe I get some transactions claimed before. Probably these are the transactions that I actually claimed before the webinar, and, and because that's continuously working, so that might be one hour ago, actually. Um, yeah, so let's see. Let's see at the stats. So we have two executions. Oh, uh, okay. So something something is really wrong, apparently, but but because the cost actually disappeared, but we have like two executions. So that's apparently a bug. Let's see. 
okay i want to show you something else so the another thing for the you know let's keep the balance low so it's not gonna hit but we can set that i wanna i wanna have this transaction to be like 0.1 profitable so minimum profitability is 0.1 ether so again if i try now to schedule some you know now we're sending some test transactions let's wait for those transactions to get mined let's see at the time note so yeah now because we set this high threshold for the profitability now the information log says like nope skipping transaction not profitable right so so you can set some minimal minimal um you know you can customize you can basically customize your economic strategy when and that will um then affect the you know how the time note will approach and go you know with the with the network and the scheduled transaction so um what else so we have another i think um another switch which is called a max deposit so let me see if i put something like let's let's put the minimum uh, uh that's minimum balance i don't see that because this uh the screen is okay minimum profitability let's set to something sane like that but let's put the max deposit to something like very very small and all of these transactions actually came with the request of the deposit so now my time note again shouldn't engage with those transactions because uh, the deposit is like required deposit is something you know something higher it's like uh 20 gua or something like that let's see let's see how the time note now um approach that so um okay i guess we're still waiting for those transactions to be mined yep now yep so so okay that's interesting so apparently apparently will the minimum so the maximum deposit yeah maybe this is actually higher than the 20 gua yeah that's probably higher than the 20 gua so i i made a mistake um uh, probably it should be even like you know smaller or this test transaction should actually require higher deposit let me let let's test that again okay i see some things like you know keeps claiming and executing stuff so this is this is right um okay let's let's now, now kill it let's try this again i think i need to set this to even smaller value like uh we just don't really want something like you know just just a fraction of the ether to be like at risk let's see if that works again let's again schedule some transactions hopefully i'm not running out of the ether for the scheduling uh yep now we get what now we hit it so yeah the transaction deposit is too high so we have this three different you know switches or the parameters basically i can just repeat it or i can just go again to um maybe something else maybe i will show you the this page so if you wonder because you know i went through some of these logs that you can see in the both in the dap in the electron app in the cli so they are ident virtually the same uh, but if you wonder and want to read or go back and, and see and check what's going on, then we prepped this small wiki page. Uh, I can I can actually post it. Um, let's you know. So so if someone from the team can post it on the chat, it would be great. Um, so so these are the they are not all the possible logs, but majority of them, at least the ones you see in the info uh, section. So info section is meant to get like you know a good view on what's going on but not really with you know not over not flow flood with the details and all this debug stuff um so yeah we seen like we have now um 
transaction deposit is too high, not enough balance to claim, transaction not profitable. So you will get here the, again the explanation, exact explanation on how the mechanics is for those um, parameters. So yeah, I think I just went pretty fast over the whole thing. So let me let me let me know if we have any other unanswered not answered questions. So um let me open the question box now and read a little bit yeah uh yeah okay yeah next level that's a good stuff uh so again uh there are additional commands so let me go to the back let me go let me go to the uh repl so yeah by the way next week i think logan's gonna uh go with some uh, okay I, I don't have nothing claimed um get failed claims i don't have any unsuccessful claim transaction but what you can do actually from the from the from the REPL is that you can uh, you can see uh each of these transactions uh and get them like you know more, a little bit more detail so just copy paste some of these numbers so these numbers here are the addresses of those scheduled transactions so this is the contract address right let's see this 0x fc you can use the request info and then you paste this address and you can read here uh, this, this is not the complete information but some of the information you know who claimed when the claiming begins and when the execution window begins and what's the now so we definitely going to work on improving that to, to put much you know more of these details and hopefully that's going to be much useful so uh thanks um next level for for reminding me about it um and let me go back because this is like okay question box right so um someone asked uh i didn't understand what claiming skipped account busy means all right so, so this means that you know on ethereum if you have one address and you send the transaction and this transaction is pending then in order to you can't really send the you know another transaction until the previous one has been has been um has been mined well in theory you could increase the nonce which is a just a number for the account uh, just one app but you don't have a guarantee that the nonce for of the previous one you know the previous transaction will succeed so if the previous one will won't succeed then the another one also will fail because the wrong nonce so in general you can't really send like multiple transactions at once saying like send send either like claim execute and claim you know at at the same time it is it works in a more of the serialized way which means that if you send the claiming transaction then you can't really your account is really busy you can't use it you know anymore until the transaction either succeed or fails right so so in general when the transaction actually get mined into the blockchain so this is um this is the information that we are skipping because your account that you are using for the time note is busy because other transaction is pending so hopefully that answers um that question um so guys uh let me know if we have anything else that we should um answer um yeah so so yeah the cli version and it doesn't really look into the day accounts that you have on your account well we are thinking that the in general the cli version is slightly different to use because it's not maybe that straightforward to install so uh we are not yet sure how we're gonna proceed with the cli version uh so the dap is definitely so and the electron is we we're, we think this is more of the like easier to use you know the kind of the not the premium but you know something like much easier for use for the for the more of the people and since you actually don't have to pay those day tokens you just need to prove that you own them that we think is a pretty fair like 
just to prove you are like you know you are some you are the holder and then you can use the DAP or the electron for the cli we are actually um yep we don't know maybe so okay so we have another question what's the difference between the three versions in efficiency um well i don't think there are too many differences in the efficiency uh per well you know the both node and chrome actually are running the same uh, engine for the javascript i think the um i think in general the uh well the efficiency here doesn't really matter uh in terms of like a pure uh, you know pure power or the efficiency it's usually about the network latency and i think both browser and the node have very similar um network latency because it's here the only only time where any of this you know efficiency might matter is whether you actually get this you know um your network is slightly faster on your you know latency is lower so you get information about the transaction earlier and maybe the pool you know the checking the transaction pool gets your uh answer you know faster than for the others and then you had a little bit of the advantage but i would say that's um that's in general for the network and on the other hand it's gonna be really like quite a more you know unpredictable because uh people will use different nodes for scheduling which means that you know the it's if the node that you're using for the time node will get the information faster than the other node then you probably get the information faster right but we don't know how people are going to use it and you know especially my crypto are using the um some sort of load balancer so anytime you you know it might be that anytime you actually um try to schedule you are going to use and send pro, you know broadcast the transaction by using the other node and then it depends actually how the communication with our node and the other nodes will be there uh yep so yeah it's it's really like you know <laughs> um hard to say so yeah as, as you said you know i think you said because that dap has been more better than the electron app in your in your case um yeah might be just just a lack or just some sort of network conditions hard to say so we rather consider them to be uh pretty much equal obviously the cli version has the much lower footprint for the memory uh but the code is virtually the same so we're running the same code which is a time node uh, core so you know this is the same code that's running both in the dap in the electron in the cli so the, the you know this exactly the same code base the the shell is different so either this is the common line or the electron app or you know the web page with the web workers okay i think <laughs> all questions answered uh again i i'd like to thank you for the contribution and and you know for help so keep sending us all these things that you see are wrong and you you know you think that something should be changed or maybe there are some things that you would like to hear on the next webinar so we all are ears and yeah thank you have a nice evening day whatever you are so you know wherever you are so thank you and signing off